Revelation chapter 15. Dare I say, a short reading this week. Eight verses. And I, John, saw another sign in the heaven, great and marvelous, seven messengers, seven angels, having the seven last plagues, for the wrath of Elohim was ended in them. They are holding the last of Yah's wrath for the earth. Great and marvelous. John seeing this is like, holy smokes, dude. Could you imagine? I've seen one angel in my days. I've seen a lot of demons. I've seen one angel. And I'll tell you this. And I'm not getting into this story now, but I would recommend if you want details on it, search for Bear Independent Testimony here on YouTube. It's a three-part series that doesn't fit into one video. The power and authority of that one messenger of Yah trumped every, every element of darkness I've ever seen in my entire life. And I guess I'll just tell it briefly. I was in a bad place. I used to, well, I blew over a million dollars in two years on cocaine and bourbon. And I decided to stop. I was in a really bad place, mentally, emotionally, physically, spiritually. And I couldn't take it. And I had decided I was going to go kill myself. And I was walking out of the house that I was in, and it was pouring rain cold rain, like 34 degrees outside, pouring rain, and my truck was parked maybe 50 yards away, and the moment I stepped out of the house, I was soaking wet, and as I walked towards my truck, we are in the woods, and I saw a little ball of white light floating from in between the trees, and it came out to the little parking lot, if you will, where my truck was parked, and it exploded into a 15-foot tall seraphim angel. Beautiful, bright, white light. You couldn't even look at it. It was so bright. And it had a sword. And it stood there looking at me. And I couldn't look at it because it was so bright. But I was warm. And I was comforted. And the overarching message that I felt in my heart was, we see you, we've got you, it's going to be okay. And I stood there for what felt like an eternity, but may have only been a matter of seconds. And it was almost as if with the slightest head nod, it collapsed back into a little ball of white light and went back in the woods. And I got in my truck and I started sobbing. Tears of joy, tears of release, tears of pain and anger and hurt. I was just sobbing. I had my head on the steering wheel. And I became aware as I was sobbing that my jeans were getting wet from my tears. And I looked down and I looked at my pant legs. They were wet with my tears and then I had the realization that there wasn't a stitch of wet clothing on me anywhere except for where my tears had fallen. And all around me, as I sat in this truck, this storm raged. And I was soaking wet the moment I walked out the front door. Call it a miracle. Call it a sign. I never doubted Yahuwah from that day forward. And the power and authority in that one messenger of Yahuwah was so incredible, it literally changed the course of my life. It sustained my life. I was going to kill myself and I didn't. 
And it took that mighty being of Yah to come and tell me, hey, dummy, we got you. And the most amazing part of this story was I had completely given up on Yah at this point. I was deep in a state of apostasy for a decade. And though I might have given up on him, he never gave up on me. So much so that when the enemy put all this garbage in my head to get me to take myself off of the battlefield, the father saw fit to send me a messenger to let me know, nope, we got you. Just hang in there, kid. We got you. That was one. And John is seeing seven. And he's seen many more before this vision. The overwhelming power and authority, I can't even imagine. Can't even imagine. And I saw another sign in the heaven, great and marvelous, seven messengers having the seven last plagues. For the wrath of Elohim was ended in them. And I saw like a sea of glass mixed with fire, and those overcoming the beast and his image and his mark and the number of his name, standing on the sea of the glass, holding the harps of Elohim. Those overcoming, those are those, those of us, sealed in the forehead by Yah, living and dead with him and on earth. What are they singing? And they sing the song of Moshe. Whoa, bro. New Testament. Last book in the Bible. What are they singing? Those who are overcoming. What does overcoming mean? Genesis 32. The name Yisrael, Israel. He who is striving with Elohim. He who is overcoming with Elohim and he who is ruling with Elohim. We are overcomers by the blood of Mashiach. We are Israel. Romans 11, 16, that's what you're grafted into. The tree of life is Israel. And I saw like a sea of glass mixed with fire and those overcoming the beast and his image and his mark and the number of his name, standing on the sea of glass, holding the harps of Elohim, and they sing the song of Moshe, the servant of Israel. They're not singing Chris Tomlin praise and worship songs. They're singing the song of Moses. They have a testimony of Yeshua, they're overcoming, and they keep the commands, Moshe. And the song of the Lamb, Yeshua, saying, Great and marvelous are your works, Yahuwah El Shaddai. Righteous and true are your ways, O King of the set-apart ones. Who shall not fear you, O Yahuwah, and esteem your name, because you alone are kind, because all nations shall come and worship before you, for your righteousnesses have been made manifest. Exodus 15, verse 1. Then Moshe and the children of Israel sang this song to Yahuwah and spoke, saying, I sing to Yahuwah, for he is highly exalted. The horse and its rider he has thrown into the sea. Yah is my strength and my song. He has become my deliverance. He is El, and I praise him. Elohim of my father, and I exalt him. And my favorite verse Yahuwah is a man of battle. Yahuwah is his name. He cast Pharaoh's chariots and his army into the sea, and his chosen officers are drowned in the sea of reeds. The depths cover them, and they went down to the bottom like a stone. This is a song of rejoicing of Yahuwah destroying his enemies. Your right hand, O Yahuwah, has become great in power. Your right, your right hand, O Yahuwah, has crushed the enemy. Who is the right hand of Yahuwah? It's Yeshua. The Mashiach. The Yod in Hebrew looks like a Y. It looks like a hand. 
that's why Yeshua says, not one yod, not one tittle shall fall from the Torah till all be done. How could you take the yods out of the Torah? The yods, the right hands are him. And in the greatness of your excellence, you pulled down those who rose up against you. You sent forth your wrath, these seven angels holding these last judgments. It consumed them like stubble. And with the wind of your nostrils, the same wind that breathed life into Adam from a pile of dirt into a living being, the same wind that Yeshua rebukes Nicodemus and says, you are an elder of Israel. If I can't teach you about the wind, the Ruach HaKodesh, how am I supposed to teach you about the kingdom of heaven? And with the wind of your nostrils, the waters were heaped up. The flood stood like a wall. The depths became stiff in the heart of the sea. The enemy said, I pursue, I overtake, I divide the spoil. My being is satisfied on them. I draw out my sword. My hand destroys them. You did blow with your wind. The sea covered them. They sank like lead in the mighty waters. Who is like you, O Yahuwah, among the mighty ones? Who is like you, great in set-apartness, awesome in praises and working wonders? You stretched out your right hand. You brought forth Yeshua and the earth swallowed them. In your loving commitment, you led the people whom you have redeemed. In your strength, you guided them to your set-apart dwelling. How do you not see the parables here and the parallels to Revelation? Peoples heard, they trembled. Anguish gripped the inhabitants of Philistia, the Philistines, now they call them the Palestines. Then the chiefs of Edom were troubled, the mighty men of Moab trembling grips them, all the inhabitants of Canaan melted. Fear and dread fell on them by the greatness of your arm, the outstretched arm, the outstretched hand, Yeshua. They are as silent as a stone until your people pass over, O Yahuwah, and to the people whom you have bought, pass over, whom you have bought. There is a Torah for redemption, how a brother buys another brother out of bondage and slavery. That's biblically what it means to be redeemed. And you were bought out of that slavery by the blood of Yeshua. The blood was the price that Yahuwah paid for you. You bring them in and plant them in the mountain of your inheritance, Zion, Jerusalem. And as we continue to read Revelation, you'll see how that plays out. In the place, O Yahuwah, which you have made for your own dwelling, the temple, the hekal, the tabernacle. O Yahuwah, which your hands have prepared. Yahuwah reigns forever and ever. For the horses of Pharaoh went with his chariots and his horsemen into the sea, and Yahuwah brought back the waters of the sea upon them. And the children of Israel went on dry ground in the midst of the sea. And Miriam the prophetess, the sister of Aaron. Miriam, Mim, Resh, Mem. Waters. Miriam represented waters. Every time the children of Israel complained that there was no water in the desert. Miriam. After Miriam dies, they come to Marabah. Bitter waters. Because Miriam's gone. And Miriam the prophetess, the sister of Aaron, took the timbrel in her hand, and all the women went out after her with timbrels and dances. And Miriam answered them, saying, Sing to Yahuwah, for he is highly exalted. The horse and its rider he has thrown into the sea. And Moshe brought Israel from the Sea of Reeds. They went out into the wilderness of Shur, and they went three days in the wilderness and found no water. And they came to Marah, and they were unable to drink the waters of Marah, for they were bitter. So that name was called Mara. The bitter waters, we talked about that previously. Adultery, wormwood, bitter waters. Do you believe in Yah after this miracle he has just done for you? Do you believe in Yah? And the people grumbled against Moshe, saying, What are we to drink? Then he, Moshe, cried out to Yahuwah, and Yahuwah showed him a tree. And when he threw it into the waters... The waters were made sweet. There he made a law and a right ruling for them, and he tried them. Do you believe he tried them? 
And he said, Yahuwah said, if you diligently obey the voice of Yahuwah your Elohim and do what is right in his eyes and shall listen to his commands and shall guard all his laws, I shall bring on you none of the diseases I brought on the Mitzrites, the Egyptians, for I am Yahuwah who heals you. And they came to Elim, where there are twelve fountains of water and seventy palm trees, and they camped there by the waters. Twelve fountains of water, twelve tribes, one for each tribe, twelve apostles, and seventy palm trees. And they camped there by the waters. Fast forward back to Revelation 15. Verse 5, And after this, and I looked, and I saw the dwelling place of the tent of witness, and the heaven was opened. What does that mean? There's a temple in heaven, and the tent of witness, the tabernacle, in heaven was opened. Oh, that was all done away with. It was nailed to the cross. Why is it in heaven with Yah? Read Hebrews. It was a type and shadow of what is to come. What does that mean? It is to come. Why does Yeshua raise Lazarus from the dead, other than to perform a miracle unto Yah? Lazarus. Lazarus, in Hebrew, is Eleazar. Eleazar was the grandson of Aaron, the high priest, the Levitical priesthood. Lazarus was dead for four days. Four days. Now, Yeshua found out about him after two days. And he said, no, nope, we're going to wait to fulfill all righteousness, to bring glory to Elohim. He was dead four days. Well, a day is like a thousand years unto the Lord, right? The Levitical priesthood has been dead for 4,000 years. When Yeshua resurrects Eleazar, the type and shadow of the high priest, it is indicative of in the end times and then in the millennial kingdom, there will be the resurrection of the Levitical priesthood. Why do we need a Levitical priesthood? Well, we saw in Revelation chapter 7, the sealing in the forehead, the 12,000 were sealed from the tribe of Levi. Why? Because they serve the temple. They teach the Torah to the other tribes. And they are like the MPs, the military police of the tribes of Israel. They hold their brothers accountable, sometimes with the edge of the sword when they do abominations. Coincidence, I'm sure. That's why Lazarus was in the tomb four days. To represent the resurrection of Eleazar, the high priest. And Yeshua wept. Yeshua wept when he saw his friend was dead. Yeshua represents a high priest in the order of Melchizedek, who was before the Levitical priesthood, and who is, again, after the Levitical priesthood, but his friend, Eleazar, the high priest, Lazarus, had been dead, had been sleeping 4,000 years, but is resurrected and comes out of the grave wearing the clothes he was buried in, the white garments, which is the exact same garment that the priests wore while they were in service to the temple. That's why it says elsewhere in Revelation, which we'll read when we get there. Make sure you keep your garments so that you know no shame. That's a direct reference to the priesthood. Because the thief in the night passage, Behold, I come like a thief in the night. That's how the high priest used to come into the tabernacle, the tent of appointment, in the middle of the night to make sure that the priest who was on watch wasn't asleep. If the priest who was on watch was asleep, the high priest would take coals from the fire and heap coals upon him. He would throw coals on his white linen garment, the same garment that was cut up into strips to use as wicks for the lamps. It burns. And that priest's clothes would be burnt and he would have to strip naked and walk home naked and ashamed because everybody knew that he fell asleep on watch. Do you not see the parables with Yeshua here? And Lazarus comes out of the tomb in the clothes that he was buried in, these white garments, the high priesthood, Eleazar. Mind-blowing. 
So when people tell you, hey, yeah, that old stuff was done away with, it's because you don't know the old stuff. You can't have the new stuff without the old stuff. And after this, I looked and saw the dwelling place of the tent of witness in the heaven was open. The dwelling place is open. What's going to happen? Well, why do we open the doors to the assembly on Shabbat? So that people can come in to fellowship, to meet with Yah. And out of the dwelling place came the seven messengers having the seven plagues. These seven angels in Revelation 15, 1 that John saw. Having the seven plagues dressed in clean, bright linen. Why are they in clean, bright linen? Because that's what you wear in the temple when you're in service to Yah. And having their chests girded with golden bands, purity, value, set apartness unto Yah. Everything in the temple was made of refined gold. And one of the four living creatures gave to the seven messengers seven golden bowls. The bowls. Go read the Torah. There were twelve bowls. There were actually 24 bowls, two different sizes, small and large, 130 shekels in weight and 70 shekels in weight. Bowls are used in temple service. And one of the four living creatures gave the seven messengers seven golden bowls filled with the wrath of Elohim who lives forever and ever. And the dwelling place was filled with smoke from the esteem, the glory of Elohim, and from his power. And no one was able to enter the dwelling place until the seven plagues of the seven messengers were ended. I'll remind you, we've not heard a word. We're now in Revelation 15. We will do 16 next week. We've not heard a word about a rapture. No one is able to enter the dwelling place to come back in union with Yah until the seven plagues of the seven messengers were ended. Biblically speaking, the Father does not shelter or remove his people from bad stuff. He stewards them through the bad stuff. Like your dad would say, builds character. But it is a separating, a sifting, separating the wheat from the chaff, separating the sheep from the goats who truly loves Yah who really wants to be here and here's the endurance endurance is a very key word you must endure and here's the endurance of the saints those that have a testimony of Yeshua HaMashiach and keep the commands bless y'all Shalom